I've never felt um, that I did not necessarily have permission to be in rooms because I'm a woman. You bring something. You just need to figure out what that thing is. So, ah, <laughs> she just walked right into it. Yeah, like, no, I, I, well, I mean, right you know, for us, it's my personal why, which mm. I've tried to tie into the business mm. why, is to contribute to an Africa that everyone, in which everyone thrives. What's good? Welcome to my African Startup Story. I am Tony Dongo. You know how we do every single time we try to get people who you can be able to relate to, who are doing business, who are starting in the middle, at the end, and try and make this conversation something that is applicable to you and something you can be able to learn. And today, oh my God, today I've got the guests. I really love the guests. I've got someone with a two-month-old business and I've got someone who's a legend in her space. And these two people are gonna be talking to you about what they have. And the first person I have is Wandia Gishoro. How are you doing? I'm good. You all right? Yeah. It's good to Excited see you. Excited to be here. Thank yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming. And I also have Sharon Mundia. Hello, hello. What's happening? How are you? Good to see you. I'm so happy that we're the three of us in this conversation. Y you insisted. Because I'm going to be asking the questions. <laughs> I'm the one with the two-month-old visit. If that wasn't obvious. <laughs> so I'm here to learn. So, so yeah. the, the point of my African startup story is really simple. It's just what's your story? What was the... What made you start the business? How was it? How is it? And what was the hardest part of building it? Because we're trying to get other people to be able to do the same. And so obviously, we all have some experience with businesses. Both of us do. You're the youngest in the group, so we're going to go with you first. I'm the baby. You're the baby. This is true. <laughs> and, and so we're going to talk about what you do. So right. tell us about your business. Whilst I do have a business that's a couple months old, I have in some ways been running a business because I'm a content creator and right. have been for over 10 years, which is actually how I first met Wendia. Right. Um, and, and I think that also kind of helped support, spur on, inspire the business that I eventually started. So a uh, few months ago, that's November, I started actually two businesses. Um, one two is businesses? In, I know, yeah, but they're both kind of related. And it, right. I think eventually they're going to merge into this one space. Right. Um, but one is in the stationery space because I love reading, I love books, I love stationery. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is in the fashion space. But it could also move into home in that it focuses on essentials. Right. Um, for now, it's fashion essentials. Um, we actually do have a partnership with, with Wendia. So the setup is a bit different in that we we will eventually have our own products, but we do partner with um, people who've been in the industry, brands that I love, right. and then come up with our own products. Um, but the theme, the key, th the key thing here is that they are pieces that should easily be um, pieces that live in your wardrobe that you kind of go back to over and over again. Right. Essentials. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and you've just been so doing this trendy. two years? I mean, two months, not two years? Yeah, two, two months. Like, and it's because, been a Because you're really sounding like you've got, you know, you've got this. You no, because like, it's something I'm passionate about. Because okay. I would I'd just often get frustrated that I don't have access to the, the simple thing. Like, mm. I just want to break it down to like, I just want a crew neck bodysuit that I can go back to. And I know it's something that I will probably wear five years from now. Um, but it it wasn't always easy to have access to that. I right. see that, and even now on the website, we don't necessarily have product, but we're trying to <laughs> to get it back. And because so yeah, um, they've been going somewhere, yeah, so yeah, 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 to, yeah, so to bring it back. Okay. Uh, no, not to bring it back, to restock and everything. But the yeah. idea is to have these items and identify what those items are, yeah. um, and just have them available twenty four seven, yeah, online. Um, and let's go to the legend yes. now. So, oh, yeah. all right. No, no, you are the legend. In case you missed it, you are the legend. Because uh -huh. Vigo is legendary. Okay, is just, it? Let's, just, okay. let's, just, let's just call it what it is. I think we've been around for a while longer, um, but we're still relatively young. Uh, so Vigo started, it's almost 13 years now. It'll right. be 13 years in May. Um, yeah, so what do you want to know? Uh, I feel like oh people know the Vivo story, mm -hmm. so I, I... That's the thing. That's what you think. That, okay, I, I all right. think the, P, the Vivo story I mean, maybe, people know mm -hmm. is the Vivo story that's PR'd. Okay. I want to know the Vivo story. You want to know the story story. All there right. you go. Um, so I worked for a long time mm -hmm. before deciding to do my own thing. So I was in my early to mid-40s when I left employment and um, was trying to figure out what to do next. 
toyed around with becoming a life coach. So I, so I went in and studied and got a... Do you not know this? No. Oh. This is really <laughs> interesting <laughs> now. But, but also it makes sense why she would be a life coach. It, it makes so much sense. Okay. So, I, okay. so I, I got a, a certification, accreditation, coached around 50 people on and off for a year and did, decided, year. I did, decided I didn't want to make it a, a, a full-time, full-time thing. thing. Right. Um, and at the time, a, friend, a close friend and I were doing a lot of dance and fitness stuff mm. and we decided that we would start a business to supply fitness clothing and accessories right okay. so that was the initial so idea that was where it started that's where it started yeah. and very very quickly um it pivoted to more of sort of general clothing right um and then um, what year was this this was 2011 when okay. we launched it was right. going to be an online only brand it was going to focus on fitness and dance <laughs> so back way back when you probably don't know this but we were selling little ballet tutus no i know that i know and, that yeah, yeah. Hip hop sneakers and tap what? dance shoes. Oh, that shoes part I did. Yeah, and but, you yeah. know all kinds of, you know, fancy stuff that you couldn't get locally. Right. Um, but then soon we realized online wasn't going to work. Like not. 2011. 2011. That's online 2011. only wasn't yeah. going to work. So True. we needed a store. As right. soon as we needed a store, we knew there'd be rent, and leases, and like Overhead legal and contracts, legal and, and, yeah. and sa- people to hire and contracts. So we panicked and decided to expand the clothing offering right. so that more people could buy. Right. And then it, the clothing is what's, what took off. So there was already one pivot from online to retail, another yes. pivot from just fitness to clothing. And then the biggest pivot was two years in when we decided we needed to start producing locally. And that was because... And that's huge, by the it way. It was huge. Yeah. And it was because we couldn't find the size range mm, mm. and the colors and the styles that our customers were asking for. Ah, so you responded to your customers. We were constantly were responding to, you know, online wasn't yeah. working. Yeah, change it. You know, fitness only wasn't working. Change it. But yeah, well, and just keep always, adapting, keep adapting. And there was always um, panic in between. <laughs> change it, panic, do it. Yeah, Situations. although I'm not really a panicker. No. I'm, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm more of a jump off the cliff and... Build no. the plane yeah. as you yeah. fall. That's situation definitely type situation. like yeah, definitely. Because it's been more thirteen years, and I'm sure you had good days and bad days. Or good months or and good bad months, months. Good years and bad years. COVID. You know, when you've got yeah. perspective, you yeah. can look behind. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's the story. The, there's two parts to this, and I really mm-hmm. like that it's two wonderful women sitting on this table because for the longest time, business has always been a patriarchal system, mm-hmm. and a lot of things have worked to the advantage of men. Without mm-hmm. a doubt, whether it's credit or customers or trust or whatever it is, mm-hmm. you both have experiences from two, I will say, different generations or experiences, right? Let's start with you. What mm-hmm. was your experience when as it came to raising capital as a woman, wow. getting investors as a woman? Well, first of all, I didn't raise capital. So mm-hmm. I, we started with savings. Okay. So I had saved, you know, a, a chunk of money. Um, so, and even in the course of the 12 years, we've raised very little, mm-hmm. and it's mostly been from friends and family. So, so why, um, why would you do that instead of looking for VCP money? Um, well, first of all, I didn't know what VCP money was. Right. So this is venture capital <laughs> and private equity for all of your Yeah, friends. yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. So I didn't even know it existed. Like, yeah. I didn't know that people would give money to someone on the back of an idea. Right. Uh, I thought you have to spend your own money. And so bank loans and debt? I mean, Evocally. you know, where, yeah, no, never took, never really took loans, partly because, mm. you That's know, amazing. by the time we That's needed yeah. additional money, mm. um, the banks, the, all the banks we spoke to wanted traditional collateral. So they wanted right. a title deed mm. or a building of, you know, piece of land, a building, right. Right. which I wasn't going to put my house on. Yeah. 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 So... We so have. How did you raise that? So, we've, like I said, friends and family, friends I like and your family, friends and family, and my and and personal savings, yeah. and and now we're starting to get into more serious um, capital raising. Right. Okay. But what I would say is, as a woman, and I don't know if this is unique. Uh, what what may, why this is? But I think I grew up with only brothers, mm-hmm. so I never known a world where I haven't had to push hard against the boys. <laughs> right. That's actually a good thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. It's Because like, that's the planet. That's yeah, just the planet. Because if, right. if there's, you know, pancakes on the table and you're you sitting be behind and, and everyone's grabbing, you've got to grab with them. Grab Otherwise, them. you won't get, ah, you know. Pancakes is such a good example. <laughs> um, so I've never walked into a room thinking that 
somehow being a woman should ma mean that I am not, I shouldn't have the same sort of access right. or whatever. Having said that, right. I'm so, so you were telling me that you've never had an imposter syndrome situation going on with you. Of course, I have. Right. But I don't know that in the space of us, in this the space we're talking about now. I've had right. it for different reasons. Mm -hmm. So before starting a business, I was a policy advisor working in the British government, the World Bank, the UN, and a lot of people had PhDs. Right. I didn't even have a master's in anything related. Okay, you know what okay, I mean? Okay. So there's been other reasons yeah. that. But what I what you also realize very quickly is. You bring something. You just need to figure out what that thing is, yes. you know? So I didn't bring the PhD, but I brought a, an understanding of relationship and how to use relationships to move a, an, an issue forward or a project forward. And you brought that into your So you bring that into what, you know, it, it, yeah, you bring something. You just need to right, figure out right. what that is. That's it. Yeah. Wow. And build more on that, I think. I mean, you can also try to do the things you're really bad at, but I'm a believer in... Try to do what you're good at. Yeah. Mm, yeah. What's your experience? So, I mean, looking back at even my career in the 10 years, it's content creation as a space that's dominated by women. Yes. Um, so that's never really been a concern for me there. I also, I, I only have one brother, mm. but I, I've never felt um, that I did not necessarily have permission to be in rooms because I'm a woman. And I think that has to do with my dad right. and him kind of from the very beginning just making it clear that if we're talking about money everyone's going to be in this discussion it wasn't like you be in the kitchen and i'll be here or you be mm. you know and the same with my mom um so i i don't necessarily think like we're in a room with majority men yeah for all of you don't yeah. see it's like 10 guys deep we're like seven guys in the back yeah <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have a men yeah, choir <laughs> yeah but i don't i don't i don't feel that i I don't have permission to be in spaces because I'm a woman. I do recognize that I don't know as much as certain people, but that has nothing to do with whether I'm a woman or not. If there was a man in this position right. and they'd been two months into a business, they better be sat down listening rather than just chiming in. Whether that would be the case, right. I don't know. But I, I just, I kind of see it as I don't, do I have, so to be in spaces where I don't have the expertise, I think I consider that a, a blessing. Right. So even in starting this business, I remember for before we kind of had everything moving, for the two months before we started everything, I would always have my laptop with me and I would be I'd have lots of questions for anyone who gave me any time of day and had been running any kind of business. Nice. I'd have my laptop and I'd be asking questions and writing it down, um, which is partly why I'm really excited and really energized about this space because it's pushing me in a direction and in, 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 in a way that I've never you know experienced been tried known yeah um, but I don't I yeah I, I mean I say that and I st well and I still believe that women in especially in this country have a harder time give, getting access to opportunities um, I recognize that I believe that fully I, I, I don't think it's even um, playing field but I for some for some reason I I just don't think that I'm not worthy because I'm a woman and well, I've never been yeah yeah, I've, yeah but you've said something that we talked about earlier which was safety you know to pick up on that yeah because one of the things that when you're doing a business safety tends to do is provide mentorship and have somebody who can be mm -hmm. able to hold on mm. onto your ideas or you can hold on to when you're not feeling like you're super strong what's your mentorship game do you have one do you have somebody you're looking <laughs> up to what's the what's the I've, tell me what i don't know yeah so i have someone I'm, I'm 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 looking up to and is i have it? someone i'm looking at right now Who's who is my mentor <laughs> that's one dia right um and uh yeah so i i find mentorship to be such a personal personal thing mm. I, I don't know if I would just walk up to anyone and request for them to be my mentor and I, and I think I'm I, how I am wired I'd want to know like what are your values who are you are you seeing anyone how is your heart what is your <laughs> mind besides just the work yeah you know, besides the work this element is, okay. I want like I want to deep dive into like are our values kind of aligned because right. I just don't want any kind of shark taking me through mm. through something that I'm passionate about, but also it requires like heart and mind and everything. And what, what um, made her? So actually, I, you know, if, if I can be honest, you offered, you brought it up. I, I don't think I came up to you and said, can you mentor me right. through this uh, space? In fact, this whole partnership came up 
so this is something about Wendy. I don't know if anyone, I'm sure anyone who's met her understands this about her, but she is, and we were talking about it earlier, but she's very curious, very open, very, let's try and see. Let's mm-hmm. try and figure it out. Mm-hmm. And if she's it doesn't work, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is it. incredible. Right. Um, and it's it's been there through and from the very first interaction. Right. It was her who reached out to me and said, I'd like us to work together, content creation, mm-hmm. all of that. And that was when no one even knew what, no one took content creation seriously. Mm-hmm. But here was like, a person who had a store in an actual mall. <laughs> Not those Facebook shops <laughs> I used to like bother to try and work with. Hey, this was Vivo in like a mall. Yeah, so yes. that's one Yes. Um, and when, you know, so this whole project came about and we were, I was just telling her what I was trying to do and she was like, why don't we do something with Vivo? And I was right. like, I, yes, absolutely. Um, but also when we then sat down and I think we were, I don't even know what exactly we were talking. I think maybe I was just taking you through a plan, what I was hoping to do. And I was just like, I was asking a friend right. to kind of, you know, what are your thoughts? This is what I'm thinking. And and then she said, you know, I'm happy to like hold your hand for the next couple Look of years. Look at that. I know. And, I, and I, was, I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And we continue talking. And in the middle of the conversation, yeah. I just burst into tears because I didn't realize how scary and how, how, how alone I felt in this journey. Mm. And because ev- I don't think you understand, everything is new. Yeah. Everything is new to me. Like from even like a deep dive into tax and how that affects a company, everything was new yeah. to me. Um, and, and so then you had to do with BRS and E-Citizen yeah, and, yeah. and oh, those homies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling she you about like, like, that. Like, 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 <laughs> <"Tim." laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, I it it's it was I, I did not realize how important it was until you offered it to me. And my reaction was to like burst into tears because I was right, right. I was I, there's just a lot of tension around trying something new, starting something new, putting yourself on the line. There's a lot of people who will have opinions as to whether it's mm, good, it's mm, bad, mm, mm, what they think. And, and I just, and, and then also we're in the same industry too. So I'm kind of walking into a space that she's been in and succeeded in, in the most incredible way. There's no other brand that she can come close. She probably built that industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and so to know that See she's... See how saying nice things about you. Yeah. <laughs> she's right <laughs> there to kind your of... flowers. Yeah. So take yeah. it. Why did can you... Can I give my you, take? Yeah, yeah, no. And Talk I mean, thank that. you. I think, I think you, you know, you've said a lot of very, very kind things. The truth is that you you're probably like the best kind of entrepreneur to to mentor because and oh, this is why to break that down. no because yeah, and literally yeah. why did i reach out to you 10 years ago or whenever it was i think it was about 10 years More ago than, right yeah, about 10 years 10 yeah. 10 years yeah. now i'd never heard of you i didn't know anything but i i think i saw a blog piece and it was just so beautifully done you know, you take your work so seriously, you know, mm. almost to a fault. Like, it, you know, there's a perfectionist kind of... I like this exchange of compliments. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. Hey, throw no, it no, down, no, but you know, so, you so you take it very seriously. And from day one, it's sort of like, okay, well, if you're going to want, you know, here's my rate card. Here's what I can do for you. You had a rate card? Yes. Back then, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. You had and a it was, rate card? Yeah, my dad, my parents gave me an ultimatum. Either make money from this thing or find another job. We're not just going to let wow. you sit in this house. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, and it, and it was very different. I mean, like you said, very few people were doing right. it, but even the ones who were, there wasn't that kind of very professional mm. interaction. And then everything you did, I mean, I, I wish we still had, I wish that those that Photos, website was yeah, still yeah, live yeah. because you you created the most beautiful content which really helped wow. vivo and then we've stayed in touch we've done we did collaboration a collaboration you are our first mm. um collaboration with a content creator uh, and you did that you we did her. that we traveled mm-hmm. together we picked fabric together we you know you <laughs> came up with this ideas and some of those styles that were part of that very first collaboration we still sell in vivo today so it's not yo do you know what i mean it's been it's been a partnership that has really worked and like sharon said i mean she comes to a meeting prepared you know she's got her notes her questions and it's serious you take it really really seriously and so and not not to say that as a mentor you have all the answers right that's true but it's just great to have a two-way conversation where it's like okay well what does that mean like and how would that work and what are the alternatives and um so she's an actual student she's a mentee like she wants to learn like, she's i think in you're hungry. a permanent student yeah, like you're yeah, constantly yeah. all the time yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. constantly learning and we're learning so again i don't see mentoring as a one-way thing i mean there are things you are far better at than vivo despite 
having 370 people working there. 300. <laughs> oh, that was a brag. That was just a brag. <laughs> that was all you did. 300 and 370. No, 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 no. Trust That's me, we're, we're going to be twice the size in, in two years. But, you know, no. the the thing is, I, I think you're very humble in the sense that, yes, you you see it all as new, but there's stuff you're really, really good at. Mm. Recognize that. And, Take and your been. flowers. And so, so you know, what what is that? So, I, I mean, we can talk maybe a little bit about the kind of conversation. Which is what I was going to jump yeah, into. Right okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so, so when you're, just to finish with the relationship part, because the relationship in a mentorship, menteeship situation is not a power relationship. It's exactly what you've said. It's a, mm. a cross-pollination kind of thing where mm. I learn from you and you learn from me and you've been able to do that really well. Mm. What are some of the things you talk about? Like, what is a, what's the, what are the lists of questions you have, apart from TIMS and BRS and yeah. citizen? what do you ask? And, and even as you're asking those questions, you know, because it's going this way, what are, you, what are you teaching and what are you learning? So it's, it's like a two-way situation mm -hmm. of what's your, what are the things you're asking about that you find as a new startup yeah. difficult to understand? And, and for you, and I really want you to think about mm. this, with 370 people, you have the confidence to say I've built a business that works and I can now chill. So oh. <laughs> you, you, you see, you, see, you oh don't. My goodness. But you don't but no, no, it's, the chilli do. it's the chilling part that I'm going to disagree with. I'm working harder now than I've ever worked. Exactly. So that's but what I, I want to I want to, and I want to check this in, check in yeah, yeah. Uh, with you on this one. Right. But I think one of the questions that for me was really important to understand and in one of our sessions, mm. was the why. The why. Your yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. That's the what why. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We had a whole session in her house and flip boards, boards, flip boards, everything. And we flip kind of boards. did a deep flip dive. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. What's your why? There's yeah. a whole book the why, about that. But the why part for me, because you got to get to the place that is beyond making money. Mm -hmm. Like underneath, like what what is that dream? What is that bigger thing? reason right. you know that that will keep you getting up in the morning and keep you through the and and the and the business itself might shift but i think your why is a little more constant what's your why so ha, <laughs> she just walked right into it yeah like, no, I, 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 well i mean right you know for us it's my personal why which mm. i've tried to tie into the business mm. why is to contribute to an africa that everyone in which everyone thrives to mm. contribute to an Africa in which everyone thrives. Yes. That's a personal thing. Mm. Yes. Wow. That's and I try to make that. Wow. So, so I, I, when I see opportunities for the business, business models, I'm always putting mm. that against the why. Right. You know, so, yeah. f and, and, you know, so that's the uh, underneath. The level up from that will be create jobs, create opportunities yeah. within the fashion space because that's, where I'm at, and right. I and I'm too old now to start trying to get to know a new, a new space, right. and then yeah, mm -hmm. so it's about creating jobs, building, you know, helping to try and strengthen the industry as a whole, you know, and and showcasing our and when I say our, I mean African. Mm. I mean I, when I started, it was much more of a Kenyan agenda. I mm -hmm. think now I have it's a much bigger African one, but it's showcasing our talent, our creativity. Mm -hmm. um, and solving some of the challenges out that the world is facing, that yeah. we, you know, that we're facing too, but we think we can provide solutions beyond just. And we can contribute. Yeah. We don't just have mm. to keep getting. And exactly. now Africa is cool all of a sudden. Like I'm a piano mm. and, and, and music, Afrobeats and art and, and fashion. Art and, fashion. And, yeah. and, and fashion actually is yeah, really yeah. doing things out there. So that's yeah. really So that's my why. Me. That's yeah. your why. Okay, let's yeah. get into you and your why and then some more questions. That yeah, and some of the questions I was asking. Yeah. Um, but so I'm, I think we're, I'm still trying to unpack that um, even further, but I know, I remember when we had this session and I just didn't think this was valid because I thought it had to have like a business angle and dr drive it back to like, you know, the, the product. Um, but I feel very passionately about women winning. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I want to create a space where that's how you feel when you come onto the website, when you wear these pieces, um, whatever problems you're trying to solve, right. I'm, that's the goal, to try and have like the woman at the center. I know even in the last couple of weeks, I had a conversation and someone was like, oh, this would be good for men's. And, and whilst I respect and understand, I remember one, I remember one day I kind of bringing something up to uh, around men. I, yeah. I, I understand and respect that, but right. like at my heart, what comes so naturally right. is the idea that, um, women are winning and women feel powerful and seen and safe 
which is a word that right. we, you know, brought brought about. We keep talking about. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but going back to the question, but again, that's something that I'm still trying to unpack, and I'm also aware that it's I'm two three months into this. Right two years down the line, mm-hmm. who knows where it's going to morph, and right. I'm not too yeah. stuck on like it has to feel, look the same way, this exact, this way, years down the line. Um, but back to the questions that I was asking. Again, because mm. I do have, I have no clue how to run any kind of business. I remember one of the things that I was really curious about was um, margins. And mm. I had no clue where, right. t- I just thought, right. you have a cup, you it cost a hundred shillings, 100 shillings to, make. to make the cup yeah and so you know how much do i you know it would feel one, nice if the cup was like you know yeah like maybe 250 max yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. that sounds really good yeah, yeah, let's go, go for go. 250 let's throw it in yeah. and then one dear <laughs> sat down and like she took the laptop and just like was this wizard and she was actually on her laptop and she just like she started this excel she did this did that and suddenly i was like I am not making any money with this first product. <laughs> I am at a loss. I have got everything wrong. I need to, like, the price point was absolutely, I don't know where I was. And, and that's why I'm like, but where, how do people know this and stuff? Where do Excel people? Sheet. That's yeah. Where the truth and she comes did, out. like, the calculations right. added this minus over this and then VAT, VAT. VAT. And it was just, like, all these elements that weren't. And you're giving uh, away your products for yeah, free. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and I and so so my questions were on right. a very practical level. It's only later that she was like, let's now really think about like the core of your business. Why are you doing this? And what are your right. goals? And right. she helped us even like try, you know try and map that out. What our you know goals for the year are, would be, and how to even kind of create a business in a model that would help us sustainably run uh, run for the foreseeable future before right. starting to think about like bigger investments and how to raise more capital and she kind of she was she was she was really good at breaking it down to the little things um so my questions were really about yeah but like things like numbers and you know processes and even now there's like a skeleton that i'm waiting for her to kind of create for us so that i'm like (laughs) how do we what does that what does that look like have you shown our financial models and things like those i mean not for like business valuations but we've definitely worked through you know revenue targets, yeah, costs, yeah. and, you know, different revenue streams, different, you know, sourcing models, mm-hmm. owning your own inventory versus, you know, co-branding with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And if you're having to pay for it, what that does to your working capital. So, yeah, things like that. But, yeah. you know, I think, I do think we've made, I, I think you've made great progress. And what I love is um, setting targets right. that are a little scary. Yeah. Very scary. <laughs> She's being modest again. I'm going to call her out every time. Like, my target was like this. The number she put was five times that amount. Oh. Like, we left there. But I, can I tell you, I love I love mm. shit like that. Like, yeah. I love a good target. Like, give me a good goal. Give to me work something towards. to work Yeah, and like, in this space, I'm the underdog. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like, make it hard. Yeah. Make me want to wake up at 4.30 I'm going to be aggressive do. about it. Like yeah. And I'm, I'm going to give dope. a shout out to men on this topic. Mm-hmm. Because Thank my you. first experience of having someone do that yeah. for me yeah. was a man. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it was a, a bunch of men. Women, and, and, and this, these are generalizations. Mm. Obviously, mm. there's exceptions to everything. But I think one of the things we bring, which is not a bad or good thing, it's, you know, we exercise a bit of caution. Always. And we, we measure, yes. you know, our risks are a lot more... Risk averse. Yeah. And yeah. We'll take risks, but we're always like, but will there be food for the mm-hmm. children? And someone needs to do that. Because yeah. men alone, you guys would we'll blow through those the children. budgets. Oh, yeah. have <laughs> or magic. whatever. It'll be bread every day. That's it. But the, but the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And so the first time I had somebody stand in front, it wasn't just me, it was me and my team, and said, you know, so, you know, what revenue do you guys think you can reach with this particular business line this year? And we gave a number, and he was like, no, I think you can, I think he said 10 times that. And at first it's like, Sorry, what? what? Yeah. What? He just added a zero at the end. Like, what would it take? Do you know what I mean? Because if it's, there are many ways to get to a goal. Yes. Mm. You know, but if you only are thinking one way, like, I only know how to, Go on Alibaba, order cups, mm-hmm. pay for them up front, bring them here. That means I need for me to sell this many, I'd need to have this, this much, much money. Inventory you know, but the then there are multiple ways to Skin you can get cap. other people to yeah. pay for inventory. You right. can borrow, you can raise, you can right. you know, so if you start to open up your mind, it's like actually and you see the, the 
you see the, you see it in someone's eyes right. when they start to be like, actually, yeah. Okay, in fact, in fact, it's, that's a, that's a it's a bit thing. scary, yeah, yeah. Actually, but you know, yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah. it's not impossible. No, yeah. it's not. It's and, not yeah, and I agree with you about that. That we kind of tend to be a bit safe with our targets, mm. and almost every time I've had a actually, you definitely, I think at this point, I think you would say that you skew more towards going for the risky decisions and like jumping in. But um, every other goal target amount that's been given that felt like crazy has come from uh, a man who's like, why don't you try and sell a thousand of these? And I'm like, do you know how much? Yeah, have you seen a thousand before? Uh, have you, have you, do you, yeah. Do you understand a thousand? A thousand? Like yeah. a thousand belts, a right. thousand anything. Right. Um, but then, like you said, if you break it down to like, okay, well, what does it look like? Not with just one right. uh, um, lens, but... One funnel, yeah. how can and, you be able to make a difference? Something else I'd say is when, when, you're, re when you're really, really starting, you don't have history. You don't. Mm -hmm. And you don't have trauma as well. Yeah, but also yeah. the history in the business. So, right. you know, at, when you've been doing something over and over again, you can say, well, look, we did manage to do X last right. year. You know, what if we, we can maybe 50, do, y, do 50% yeah, more so. if yeah. whatever. Yeah. When, when, when Sharon was launching the first collection, we'd, you'd never done it. So yeah. it's sort of like, well, what can we do? What is possible? What can you do, I should yeah. say? And as much as I was there pushing, right. She exceeded all those targets. Yeah. Look at you. And within a shorter time frame, I mean, it, you know, so now it's like, yeah. whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, exactly. All right, let's yeah. double okay. down. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's try, you know. Yeah. yeah. And so, but you at least you start to build a track record. Yeah. We, even for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that gives you trust. Mm -hmm. yeah. That reduces the risk. Mm -hmm. And that gets you closer to that cliff that you're saying yeah. she lives on. Yeah, yeah. And you start moving away from being risk averse and stuff. I have two questions. Because these two questions matter and they're really important because you're both in a space that defines, in a lot of ways, the way women look at themselves. Mm -hmm. You came from social media mm -hmm. and you come from fashion. Mm -hmm. Social media has been one of those places that has, in very many ways, added value to women, but also in very many ways, devalued women. Mm -hmm. Tra tragically, mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest pushers or drivers of mental health issues among women more than even men. Whereas fashion mm -hmm. has also been that for women in very many ways. Mm -hmm. For the longest time, and you know this more than anybody else, there was a particular frame or size or you need to fit a particular shape for you to be able to make sense in the fashion space. How have you both thought about that? Or have you thought about that? Or has that been an issue in your business? Because you've gone into a space that predominantly was attacking women and you're now serving them with an intention of making them win. How have you thought about that? I will you, give you a you moment to You want to go first? I, I mean, I have plenty yeah. of answers. Yeah. But yeah. So I think, well, one, I think it has to do with inclusivity. I, that, interesting, I didn't, I, I wouldn't have said that social media has had more ad, a, a, adverse effects on women mm -hmm. than men. Mm -hmm. I know, I think in, in general, I, I believe it's, it's, it's had a lot, of, it's led to a lot of mental health issues and mm -hmm. in comparison and, um, I mean, even down to relationships breaking up. Like it's just it's ha it's brought its drama. But I don't know if um, if if it necessarily uh, has a has a negative impact on women specifically. Mm -hmm. That being said, I do see how it's like a landmark. You don't know what you're going to step on. You don't know what you're right. going to see. You don't know how it's going to leave you feeling. Right. My goal, though, in creating th these pieces and bringing these. Um, items to, to, to life is to try and be as inclusive as possible, right. as simple as possible um, in, in even like the product, the products that we're offering. And I think that allows a lot of women to see themselves. So even in like the photos, I remember, I think one of the first things that kind of uh, helped give us the, the kind of reaction that we got was, was one of the main things rather, was that I had um, my best friend there and we're different sizes, so you kind of get to see yourself and there's not one particular way of, of looking or being or feeling. I mean, that being said though, I do see how everything is, is very visual and aesthetics and how does it look, but my and goal curated. is to create, yeah, and curated, and curated. curated right, but yeah. yeah, but my goal is really, how does this leave you feeling? So whenever I, we're even creating, um, trying to, figure out what the, the next story will be right. um, and how to tell the story of what this product is about is how do we want you to feel when you watch this, when you when you consume whatever content that we right. put out? Because that's how, I, when you're putting these pieces on, do you feel like cozy and fun and like 
like not fun but cozy and um uh comfortable in which case how do we try and try to bring that out in the content mm-hmm. that we put mm-hmm. we put out but i yeah i don't know if i've really thought about yeah the the idea of social media having a, a negative effect on on the on women mm. and the women that we speak I think to. the research mm. that I've heard definitely suggests that women are you know worse affected and maybe because mm. women are the bigger consumers of it and because for women that comparison thing and when it comes to how we look women are valued often by how mm-hmm. they look how we look mm-hmm. yeah um men are valued more for what, what they, they have, have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and so um they've said for example suicide rates among young women have gone up and they trace a lot of that back to mm. social media but like in, it's higher yeah. like the growth the jump is uh, it's higher m- for women there's still more suicide amongst men. young men yeah, yeah. Yes, but the numbers so. relative numbers of women now are higher and oh. they trace that back to social media yeah. oh wow yeah. 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 and how how have you but dealt yeah, with it but yeah i mean i think for me you know our whole <laughs> part of vivo's you know whatever success we've achieved to date has come from the fact that we we recognized quite early on that black women in particular mm. um are not really catered for in the whole global fashion space Full stop. Mm. and and as right. africans we tend to wear other people's clothes whether yeah. that's second hand clothes or whether it's imported product it was never made for us in mind and right. so just our you know the, the 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 sizing the silhouettes the shapes the the pr- you know the styles were never designed for us mm-hmm. um So I think just starting from that and we we didn't necessarily understand how big of a challenge this was and I think a lot of consumers didn't understand it until they they were able to walk into a store put on something that worked. Yeah, <laughs> and that right. feeling of like oh Moist. my god I don't yeah this feels great and it looks great and so you know being able mm. to put something on look in the mirror and 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 be like I feel 10 years younger. I feel beautiful. I feel this fits my seen. waist and hips. Yeah, I, like you know, I don't have to go basic, and take yeah. it to a tailor to have yeah, it adjusted. Yeah. Having said that, I'm not trying to suggest we get it right all the time, but some of the things that have worked for us right. is trying to showcase product in, you know, on real people mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. your runway model type type figure. Cuz you've really done that. Like And we, really you know, we get yeah. criticized sometimes that we're not doing it enough. We mm-hmm. need to do it more and you know, sometimes it's just you know, you're trying to move so quickly you end up using the same models over and over and mm-hmm. then people are like, "Well, hang on, how come you're not showing this kind of person mm-hmm. anymore?" So we have to c- constantly challenge ourselves right. to to keep um you know, ensuring that we're still speaking to to the range of stuff. But one something I wanted to say Sharon also with you, even in your content you've mm-hmm. never been you've never put out the, that kind of content that is hating on anybody yeah like you can't sit or, with us or or sh- you know trying to showcase a particular like it's always been about women winning and yeah. about mm. you know mm. being real being you know i have good days i have bad days yes sometimes i look perfect with perfect mm-hmm. makeup on but there are other times i'm just i just got out of bed and i just want to share this story so i think the brand itself your brand comes to this space with a very inclusive type approach mm-hmm. which is right. now se- being seen through your products as well oh, yeah thank nice you. i yeah, like that the authenticity you. of yeah. it yeah yeah well i wanted to add about uh, wanted to add something you see, about I keep saying well. i shouldn't be here oh, no, 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 you're no, asking the no, right question no, no, it's the sip some tea but yeah. okay you were saying but, but what i wanted to say as well is um is you know to add to what you said about like even sizes i think what vivo has also done and you just had a campaign about this is also ages you just had something that had i think oh, only yeah. women yeah. above a certain age i don't remember what the campaign was called but you were fabulous all fabulous at any age uh, fabulous and at any women age over exactly 45. exactly yeah. and right. so even that cuz i i think at some point sometimes fashion assumes that oh at this point you don't really care what you're going to wear mm. do you mm. you like we we kind of are only catering to this age group and cuz this is what looks cool and translates really well yeah and and so I think what you've also demonstrated is it's not just even about size it's about age. Um I I do feel maybe as as a whole we we can do a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um and and the onus is on on me and on us I guess to make sure that as many people see themselves in these in these pieces. But I you know I think the size range that we offer and I'm sure it's it's the same it would be the same for Vivo is like from 
size six UK to about 18. Mm. Um, and I know there's space for more. Yeah, but I think now what I understand, yeah. and I'm digressing a little, yeah. but now for the, I understand why um, it's not always so easy right. for everyone to come up with that kind of range and right. that kind of you know space. But if yes. you can, I really don't know why you would be sitting on on that opportunity to just mm. make sure as many people can see themselves in your in your pieces. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's well said. In the as we're getting towards the end of this, every everyone talks about the good days of business. Three hundred and seventy staff, and you're going to double that in two years. You started something amazing, and the authenticity of that is, oh my god! I mean, I saw what you put out, and I was like, that is impressive. It's really, really good. But I know you've had dark days. I know you've had days when you're like, I could just close this, and I will be fine. It's, I don't need to do this. Just ah. When was that for you? I've had a few of those. <laughs> it's I been know two it's only months. been two months. <laughs> no, not closed down. I didn't think. I, I, okay. I have. Uh, I'm. I'm really excited, aggressive, ha happy about this opportunity. Right. I, not nothing about like I want to shut it down. But I have had moments of um, just deep frustration. I, I do remember asking when Dia, like, what do you do in those moments? Because I, I cry. Mm. <laughs> I give my. And there was a point where every evening I'd ask myself, do I want to cry or do you want to try and finish up this work? Let me finish up this work. So was I don't have time crying, to like cry. Finish work. And, yeah, and it was right. just... Finish it was work just first, then sense, cry after. Yeah, so right. that's, okay. that's my, the, yeah, that's my release. Right. But, um, but I also, I've, so I've consumed a lot of um, content around starting a, a business. Mm. And one thing is clear, there will be good days mm. and there will be bad days. And I have experienced it, like going from the highest of highs to within 24 hours, it's like straight up panic. And, and... So I'm, I'm aware that this is, but also that is life right. at the heart of it. Like it's the ups and it's the downs. Um, and it's about like kind of powering through. And if you need to pivot um, and if you can call your mentor and just yeah. be like really quickly, what do I do? This feels like it's. Um, or just sob. Yeah. yeah. Or sob. Yeah. Or that too. Yeah, that works that too. as well. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't know if there's any other way to run a business besides just knowing that there will be those days and there will be good months, good years, bad months, bad years. Right. Yeah. What about you? How many times oh, have you wanted I mean, to and, 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 and be in straight, full like, disclosure, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Vivo has been part of the cause of some of Sharon's frustration. <laughs> no, don't say that. It's true. I mean, as much as, you know, in, and that's the thing with partnerships as well, yeah. is, or in, in any, you know, with any business, you're going to be relying on others. For sure. Either they're going to be others in your team, yeah. it's going to be your suppliers, it's mm -hmm. going to be your distribution partners, it's going to be the, the guys who are editing your content for you. And, and you can only control so much, yeah. and typically that's what you're bringing. You can mm -hmm. control what you're bringing right. to the table, but right. you, you're never going to be bringing all of it. Mm -hmm. And even you can't even co control 100% what you're bringing. Yeah. Um, if you wake up in the morning, you have a cold and you're unwell. And so I guess mm -hmm. yeah. what I'm still learning is that... For me, resilience isn't around getting it right. Mm -hmm. It's around how to respond. How do we respond when things aren't going as well? Mm -hmm. So I'm a planner, and I, like I love things to go according to plan. Mm -hmm. And so my frustration is when it's not happening that way. Right. You know, like that was the we agreed, and you said this would be here, and I, you know, I said I would do this, and I've done it. You've not done your part, whatever. Um, and sometimes I don't do my part either. But I think it's breathing through mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when things aren't quite going according to plan and not letting that completely mm -hmm. throw you throw you off right. because and, and to always try and build in a bit of space mm -hmm. for you know, so if if for example She's sounding very much like a personal coach, right? No, she's, she's and it's exactly what she told me. I'm yeah. just like it's, it's <laughs> like this is personal yeah. coach, right? No, but if you're if you're I'm, if, I'm if your so entire much. offering is time, you know, there's a time to it. Like you've you've gone out and you've said we will launch on this day. Yes, you have to launch you, on that day. and you have to launch on that day. Yeah. You want everybody else to think the day is two weeks before. You've yeah. got to build yourself yeah. Yeah. time yes. for the things to go wrong because yeah. things will, will go will wrong. Go wrong. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And, and the more people you have on your team, the more things will go wrong. That's yeah. true. More, yeah. There's yeah. more coordinating. Yeah. There's more, you know, um, multiple 
communication challenges that will happen, yeah. messages won't be clear, yeah. mis- you know, misunderstandings. And so, and so sort of building that in. I mean, I must say that other bad days are, you bring your life to your business. You, yeah. you know, you can't separate what's going on with you, mm. uh, what's going on with the people you love. Mm. Um, you know, it could be your children are, are not well, are going through a tough time. It could be that, you know, there's actually no money in the bank account, mm-hmm. even though you made commitments. And <laughs> That's true. And I must say that, again, men do a better job of putting a brave face. I mean, I've I've watched guys and now sometimes I know the backstory. I know what's really going on. Yeah. And I see them <laughs> on stage audacity. telling stories. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> For me, it will be in my face. Yeah. I will have cried all night. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's so hard. But yeah, sometimes, nice. I mean, yeah. and there's a thin line between lying and, you know, stretching the truth a little bit to just get you and your team through something. That's true. Um, I think my hardest days are when I f- feel I've let everyone down. Mm. Those are the hardest days. Mm. It is much easier to forgive other people than mm. it is to forgive yourself. yourself. Oh, that's so true. And I've had times when my irritation levels are so high that I've spoken to a team member. And you know, you, f- you forget, especially when you're the boss, everything you do has much bigger impact. Right. You're right. louder. It's right. like you have a megaphone Mm -hmm. which is great when you're complimenting people and it makes their day it does but when you're criticizing or you are are also destroying yeah you know and so yeah the times when i've 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 just you know said something or done something and i know that i've really messed up yeah yeah so those those are my my worst days i think second the second will be when i feel very betrayed and mm. I've had, you know, situations where a team, you know, someone in the team has stolen. Oh, no. Um, and, you know, for me, it's almost like it's so personal. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. My child it's has like, stolen Yeah, from it's me. like, oh, know, you know, I'm how? I'm taking care of you so <laughs> much. Why? But, you know, that, that's the reality is that, yeah, people will do things. Yeah. You know, and, and we're all human. We're people all flawed. Yeah, and, um, and again... It's not personal. It's not personal. Like people aren't stealing from you mm. and yeah because they dislike mm. you and yeah it's because yeah. maybe there's something happening in their lives and or they f- they feel that's how you get on in life and and I do think you know the importance of and this will come over time but it's no there's no harm thinking about it early is mm. who are you bringing on your team? Mm. What kind of cult you know you talked about it from a mentor point of view mm. are we aligned on values and but I think that's true even for, for your staff mm-hmm. for your partners but i'm sure it gets hard you see i have a so i have a very small team so for me to try and create that culture it's a lot easier yeah. right and and actually i was even we had a review uh about a week ago and i was just saying how lucky i feel that i found someone who feels very aligned mm. with my values but I, I i wonder how much harder that is to kind of apply and to manage with 300 plus people so i can like at this point i can know you know whether they're taking their child to school and what that looks like and what they did over the weekend. But with hundreds of people on your staff, how much harder is it to kind of create that culture or maintain it? Uh, I think, I mean, of course, it's really hard. But, I, but you know, for anyone who's listening, who's like you starting or has a tiny team, I think what I didn't do early on was imagine that those are questions I should be thinking about. Right. And there's you no, never foresaw. I, I right. didn't really right. think about it. I was mm. so desperate right. to just bring bodies to the table and, you to know, get, get, get people to right. can get, get stuff done. And right. so, you know, how you interview people, the kind of questions you're asking, how and what what really matters the most. Like I would so much rather work to build somebody's competence or skill set if they seem capable of learning but they have the right attitude mm-hmm. right, than right. I am to try and find someone who can, who mm-hmm. has the skill set, and I'm not, I'm less worried about their, yeah. their values and their attitude. And yeah. because what I've learned yeah. is that having a, you know, someone with negative kind of energy, most people will match. Most people. 80% of people are matches. Right. 
10% are givers, 10% are takers. But the takers and the negative will influence so much more than the giver. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the ones yeah. in the middle will mm. start to, you know, suddenly everybody's complaining and everybody's energy level is low and people okay. are less motivated. And you're like, wow. what's happening? And Who's, it can be yeah. literally wow. one person, one person yeah. that will influence eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh somebody said this to me, he said, <laughs> culture it's strategy for breakfast. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. If you're not careful about your... And the second phrase, the second statement, which was actually really good, which I've always taken to heart, and I'm like, this is so important, is he said, what smells bad smells so much worse than what smells good. Mm. Be careful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like a bad, so, bad energy will yeah. out... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out yeah. Shine. Will, shine. Yeah. 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 Will eat the it's good. huge. So important. my question then would be... Yes, podcast. Yes, yes. <laughs> the question um, and it's a lesson that I'm learning, even in my personal life. Mm. So, how quick are you to rid yourself of those people? And and it, is that something that you're trying to, you know, you you try like, as soon as you identify this person is not right. Is it like an it's, immediate out? It's not that easy, you know. Once you're in an employment contract, mm. and so, you know, you you have to have reasons to let somebody go. Um, and so it's easier, for example, if when you're starting, you, you try to get to know someone. I mean, the time it takes you before you offer a full-time contract mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and I think, again, sometimes you can actually turn around someone's attitude. It, mm. it could be that they're coming from a history of never being valued, assuming the worst, you know. So... I would say still try and give somebody a chance. So you would sit down and say, look, I love what you do. Your work is great, but your attitude, your attitude, mm -hmm. especially and be very specific right. around, yeah. you know, yeah. this when, you know, the way you, the way you sort of handle things in this situation, um, you know, had this impact on on the result, on other people, blah, 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 blah. Can we think of ways that could have been handled differently? You know, and, and you'll see whether somebody is willing, able to, to, yeah. to sort of respond. But yeah, I do. I mean, people say hire slowly, fire quickly. That's technology. Right. And, and, and I feel like also there's a mm. value to just your human skill, your human mm. interaction skill, your you know, coaching talents. Mm -hmm. Because the way you communicate with people is not the way many employers communicate to many staff members. It's just... Mm -hmm. That, that room of empathy, that space of listening, and that ability to empathize is just, it's just not there for so many people. So even, that's another thing I've come to learn. But they've not seen it. You see, you only they've know it exactly. when you've seen it or right. someone has shown right. it to you. And by the way, I'm not always good, huh? Yeah. I don't, I don't do it anywhere that. near as much as I, as I should, and, right. and I hope to do, to do it a lot more. Um, but I would, I would say it, you're, it's never too early to start. So I'm glad that mm. you're thinking about these things now. And I think, you know, at any business, even if it's, 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 it's who you bring with you, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and it could be, like I said, the, the brands you choose to work with, yeah. the yeah. suppliers, yeah. the, the dis distributors mm -hmm. or, you know, um, and even yeah. just the persona you choose to sell to your people. Like mm -hmm. you said it before, mm -hmm. it's how you make them feel. There's a lot mm -hmm. of products that that deceive folks and when I found find out I have been deceived like I never use that again I'll just I'll never use it I remember there's a time uh, a lady's um, sanitary product uh, mm -hmm. was tested out and, and proved to be terrible and mm -hmm. the sales dropped and they have done everything for the longest and I'm a guy I don't use the product but I know from you know all the women around who have purchased those do not buy this like it's the get whatever else is there. If you get this, it's fine, but mm -hmm. do not get this. Then they'll forever never be able to recover because mm -hmm. people found out that they were being deceptive and they were giving us you know, poorer products and they were giving people in other parts of the world. So I think that for me mm -hmm. is such a phenomenon, how you make people feel. It's what I've come from. Mm -hmm. you know, I've heard it from the both of and you. How you. And also how you respond to, to when, mm -hmm. they're, when customers aren't happy. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I think right. that's customers, a, big, right. Customers. Right. Yeah, yeah. a big part yeah. that um, we underestimate a the the cost of not dealing with and but also the potential benefit if you deal with it well right yeah. you know it's an opportunity to get somebody right. even oh. more loyal yeah, even yeah. more right. yeah. supportive yeah. 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 if they feel seen and heard in the response to their complaint yeah. right yeah. that's that's build as somebody said um, your first 100 customers are your cult followers if you mm -hmm. love them and they love you back 
the next mm -hmm. thousand, ten thousand, million will be easy to get because mm -hmm. those a hundred will be your. Oh, I don't know about easy. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you will yeah, figure it out. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah, know. Yeah. So, hey, ladies, can, in, so, yeah, oh, I was going to yeah, say you closing. Yeah. Sorry, I just have one yeah, more yeah. question. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, we could do it after the cameras. <laughs> okay, one question. Go ahead. One question. No, it's it's because I I think I'm curious about you know we we've talked a little bit about like you know being an empath and trying to listen and and be more compassionate and all of that, but I wonder how much of that works in a business setup where you, you there's also the need to be a shark, need to kind of be aggressive, need to be like, I know you're hurt, but this is In fact, fact, can I even... So like, where do you... Can you I know? add to your question? Because yeah. that's a really okay. good question. Yeah. And I, want to, I want to be like, where did we learn, and, and your feedback mm -hmm. is important because I'm also learning from the both of you, where did we learn our business manners? She said a shark. And in my mind, I'm like, why? Why did we, who said that that's what we need? To, why can't we, why can't we, to your point, be empaths, but at the same time be firm? Mm -hmm. You know, what's, what's, how, how do we define ourselves as, as business owners? And, and how do we show up as humans that have a responsibility? to our customers and to our investors and to ourselves and to all of that. I hope I've, mm. yeah, have yeah. I reframed yeah, the, yeah. have I added yeah, yeah. value yeah, to yeah. your question? Yeah. I mean, I definitely don't define myself as a shark. But I, sorry, so, so maybe I know you said you don't define yourself as you one, but I think you are. A shark? Well, I, I think what I'm wow. saying, I think, but maybe it's not clear. No, yeah. no, but She's here's the thing. I, I don't necessarily think it's a bad, I don't think in business, it's, there's a space for like, oh, come here, let me, oh, but let me just so call you. Huge so like, where is spectrum in, be, in right. between yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I guess what I've, I'm learning and, um, we're getting better at this all the time, is that people need to know what is expected of them, mm -hmm. and they need to be clear how they're supposed to, to get there, and that you're supporting them in giving them the resources and the tools and the knowledge and whatever it is that you know, is gonna help them get there, and then they are responsible for delivering on that. So that defined results, de very clear targets, timelines, whatever those are, and those are, that's why you're here. It's a contract, especially if it's someone you, you're paying a salary to. Right. Um, and so I think the conversation has to be a, you know, you have to talk about performance. And if somebody isn't meeting, isn't able to perform, then they're not meeting their end of the contract. And right. I think something, you know, right. they will, there will be a conversation around that. Yeah. But there are very many businesses, including Vivo, for a lo the longest time, that we weren't always that clear. Mm -hmm. So it's very mm -hmm. hard to have a performance right. conversation mm -hmm. okay. if you haven't defined, defined it metrics. and if they haven't been part of that process right. so that they own it mm -hmm. and that they're able to say, you know, oh, okay, I know you're saying this should be done, by, but the reality mm -hmm. is it can only, you know, we can only do it, if you want it that quickly, we can only do X. Mm -hmm. If you want Y, it's gonna take a bit longer. Mm. So you have that sort of conversation and then it's, okay, we've agreed. Okay. Yeah? Now, outside of that, if somebody is struggling, then you, you know, you should be open to sort of saying, okay, well, what's going on? And, and people need to escalate things early quickly. as well. Don't yeah. wait until- Things have caught fire. Yeah. Yeah, it is bad. <laughs> um, but I think, the world in which it was just go, 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 yes. go, work 24-7, yes. yeah. I don't give a fuck what else is going yeah. on in your life. I don't think those businesses are going to succeed in I the don't future. think they have, actually. A lot of I them think, I think they. I think there was a time mm. and a place where yeah. even the types of CEOs who came across that way were really celebrated. Yes. I think that's changing yes. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. And no one, no one wants to work in For that sort people. of an environment. Yeah. Especially and let me generation. give you an example. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. Especially I'll give you an example. And this is in a space which is pretty standard, mm. which is an, on the manufacturing side of our business. Mm -hmm. And the industry as a whole typically works five and a half days a week. So most factories are open half day Saturdays. Yeah. Mm. But that means people have to pay transport again mm. on a six day mm. and whatever else. So we early on said, why don't we do just Monday to Friday, but to compensate for the lost time, instead of eight to five, it will be eight to six. Mm -hmm. 
but they're the only part of the business that was eight to six. Everybody else was working eight, eight to, five. to five. And uh, un unless you're in the store and you're on, on a shift, that's different. Yeah. And so we have values, corporate values is one of them is, you know, we sort of are a fair employer and we right. treat. So, uh, mm. you know, they started to be pushed back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the person who's head of production who has to meet the targets is like, man, you take away my extra hour a day, that's going to mess my numbers, and I'm under pressure. But I, I was struggling with this mm. inconsistency. Right. And you're saying one thing, doing, doing another. And I think, you know, the promises you make to you, yourselves are just as important as to, to everybody people. else. So, so this year, I just said, we're doing eight to five across the business, manufacturing included. Guys, please do what you can to try and keep the numbers. Do you know our numbers have gone up? Yo, wow. look at that. Imagine. Yeah. It's so counterintuitive, yeah. this thing. Yes. But people are more wow. motivated. Right. Because and you they're more, to and, them. And, 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 you know, I'm saying mm. find ways within the, pl within the current processes. So without a single extra machine, not mm. a sing single wow. extra person, we're doing about 10% more that's, in mm, an hour insane. less a day. That's, that's insane. Yeah. But I said, you guys figure it out. Figure I'm it. relying on you. You know what the business mm. needs. And so, you know, I do think... Um, There's ways to go around things that seem yeah. impossible. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I really... They, this is what I constantly keep hearing with her. Mm -hmm. I've seen it now with you when she gave the example of how you, you didn't have history, but then you outsold what you expected in a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. It's just... For me, what I've gotten to learn is just think outside the box and, and never think you're not worthy. Ladies, we have to bring this to a close because we could be here till Saturday <laughs> just doing this. So in, in a statement, both know your cameras, what would you yeah. tell a young woman? Actually, what would you tell the younger version of you? Oh. It wants to be you. What would you say? Oh, Lord, there's so many things I would say. Cameras over there? <laughs> and your camera's over there? Don't do Try it. Try to keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go into Don't it. Do it. <laughs> it's not worth it. Um, no, but what would I... I think... So this is an idea. This project was something that I'd had brewing for a while and the thing that kept me away was fear I was so scared and I was so scared of failing I was so scared of failing publicly I was so scared of disappointing I think even towards the start of the the partnership when we were launching I remember just even I don't know if you understood how scared I was I think we were launching in a day or two but I, I was scared of disappointing her mm. and disappointing customers that everyone there was just it just felt like the number of people that I could disappoint Kept now yeah it yeah. was it was no longer just like me and the one client who may not be happy about ABCD it was the customer my staff the teams that I'm working with the person who's mentoring me it just felt impossible but I also now know for a fact that what's more devastating would have been not giving myself this shot, not trying, right. not starting. Right. And also, majority of people don't know what they're doing. Mm. They're kind of learning on the job. Mm. And that's what I had to keep reminding myself. You didn't start off knowing how much fabric is needed to do X, Y, Z, or where to source a fabric, or what production needs to look like in, you know, for you to hit your targets. But you did the first thing and then did the other. And am I capable of doing that? Yeah. Are you capable of doing that? Do the first thing in front of you, then do the other, then do the next. One step and next time. thing you know, you, you know Your. how to work ETIMS. And you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you, and you know, like, the business, that, that's the thing I taxes. learned. <laughs> that's the thing I just finally figured out this week. So I'm like, look at that. But on, on a serious note, next thing, Vivo isn't where they are. You're not where you are as Vivo because you started yesterday it's mm. because you've been doing and failing mm. and then coming back from those failures mm. and the minute it hit me that we just have a like a group of people trying to figure it out yeah. mm. suddenly i was like I, and i remember even saying it like why can't i be i have the same number of hours i again it's really odd that i have my mentor here but i just i'd say i have the same number of hours as one i yeah. can work just as hard as she does yeah. so the only difference is that she's had x amount of experience why can't i figure it out the minute it, it became so clear to me, I mean, you can't it. tell me nothing. Yeah. And then, I, and then she's holding my hand through this process. There you go. Oh, please. You've got it. Oh, please. I love so, it. So whether you have a mentor who's, you know, in the same industry or not, mm. or whether you have a mentor or not, I, I genuinely just believe, like, try solve the problem in front of you, and then the next, and then the next, and the next thing you know, you know, Boom. you've got hundreds of, your, you've got your multi-million dollar companies and, and everything is moving that's and correct. yeah so and it goes. that's my advice yeah gosh madam um, mentor how, yeah what Take would us I home. what would I say yes. I, I, I think first of all 
get the idea out of your head and, and try. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of, maybe men as well, but definitely women think about it and are so afraid or, you know, want to get it so clean and perfect that the trying, and it's only in the trying that you learn. Mm -hmm. um, that would be one. Two is to really be learning and curious and asking and finding the people to, to sort of talk to. And it could be an official mentor, it could be somebody in the industry that's just, there are a lot of people who are very happy to share their stories. No mm -hmm. one asks them, you know, and there's no harm in asking. I've heard of people that I would never have imagined, you know, the, the Bidco guys or whatever. People had called them up and said, can I buy you lunch? Mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. and just hear your story you yeah. talked about bob collymore yeah. i mean there's there's so many people who are on you know on the other state or the other side of success who just want to give back um so i think finding people to 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 uh, you know ask the questions to you're gonna have to work hard there is no easy i mean mm -hmm. maybe a few people hit the jackpot and, and win but i think for most people it's going to be they'll mm -hmm. put in the work and i'm a big believer in writing things down and having some form of a plan, you know, something right. and the plan will shift and things will move. But, but you know, you plan. have something that's yeah. guiding, whether it's a, for the day, the week, the month, the year um, that you're able to refer to and um, you can share with with others and get their thoughts on. Does this make sense? I also think that structured learning is really important. I've benefited a lot mm. from from the kind of courses I've gone on, you know, Stanford Seed. Right. Um, there's lots of incubator programs, right. and uh, I think there'll be more and more available. So, so yeah, having models, testing stuff, uh, uh, you know, with basic business models, and and being able to put budgets in place, mm. you know, um, work Excel, because <laughs> yeah. that's gonna be your friend. Excel. It's gonna be oh your friend. God. Excel is where it's yeah, at. Right. It really yeah. is. Businesses live and die on Excel. Hundred. I now understand that fully. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. numbers yeah. and data. Numbers right? and data. Yeah. But and, as you said, you learn as you go. Yeah. You learn as you go. If you put one leg in front of the other, yeah. you keep moving. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. dear, Sharon, it was amazing to have you both. Thank you it for having so us. Good. It wasn't this the coolest conversation? It yet? was. <laughs> you but you're really, you really ask great questions program. as well. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. And uh, you need to be the, on the side where someone's asking you the questions about I your agree. because I think I you could that. have answered a lot of this. Yes, I get yes, that. Yes, yes. It's, it's yeah. cool. I think right now for me, the African story I care about is these stories. Uh -huh. I, for for a lot of our, my background is technology, and a lot of us, I think one of the biggest challenges is that technology has been the news has always never been African, mm. and that's why I started my African startup story just to get to learn because startups has t typically been an, a tech word. Startup mm. is very mm. techy. Then I got to realize they're more beautiful, and you said it, they're more beautiful stories out here that we've never heard. Mm -hmm. And yours is one of them, yours is definitely one of them, and I want to see and I want to hear more mm -hmm. from non-tech folks. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. how many people mm -hmm. are going to come into my industry? A very small percentage. Mm -hmm. But then yourselves, it's amazing to have you. Thank you so much. Thanks to the crew. Thank you. Of so thank many you. people having thank over you here. And, you. and thank you all for watching my African Startup Story. And until next time, I hope you get to start your business and you learn something. Goodbye. Goodbye. Nice Yay. guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you wow. so much.